Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel once again. So recently I got sent this Kaiwu Tycoon Max 3D printer. So today we're gonna take a look at this. Let's get it unboxed. Let's see what's inside and let's test this puppy out. All right, everyone, so I got this out of the box, and let's see what we got here. We have the base and everything like that. You got the filament, you got the screws, Allen wrench keys, all the tools you're gonna need to put this together, spatulas, filament holder, and the user manual. And it looks like this user manual is actually really easy to follow, and it's in color, and it's not just uh, put this on this. But it, apparently, they say that this only takes four screws to put together. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this put together and let's see if that's actually true. All right, everyone, so I got this all put together and yes, it was only four screws. Technically six if you counted two for the, uh, the spool holder. However, they were already on there. All I had to do was put it on and tighten it. So I really wouldn't count that. Now the four screws, they were a little bit hard to get to just because they're underneath and they go up through the rail. So the easiest way I found was just to slide it to the end of the table, screw it on on one side, and then I can tilt it over to get the other screws in. But these were the only two tools that I needed were the two Allen keys. The big one was for the screws underneath and the next size down was for the spool holder. So that was it, really simple. And then all I had to do was screw in the heat bed and plug it in and attach the y-axis motors and uh, limit switches and that was it simple so we'll go ahead and get this turned on and we'll get the filament fed in and let's start a test and see what happens so the power cord is actually on the back but it's pretty simple to get to it's right on the side no big deal there you can see the on off switch and right here make sure you set your voltage to the correct voltage whether you're using 110, 220, just make sure you switch it to what it's properly for. Now over on the side of the machine, you can see that you have the SD card, the TIFF card, and the micro USB port, depending on which one you wanna use. I just went ahead and inserted the, the TF card right into the top. Now the printer's turned on, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's very quiet while it's not doing anything. I haven't actually printed anything yet, so I'm not sure how loud it is right now, but yeah, it, it's really quiet. So let's go ahead and do what it says to do. So we'll go to settings. We'll go to, nope, back. Let's go to tool. We're gonna home it first and we'll home all. So now that that's done homing, let's go back and let's auto level and we'll get this completely leveled before we start printing. So now that that's auto leveled, let's go ahead and fill in the filament so it says first you need to preheat it. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's preheat and we'll preheat the extruder along with the heat bed. So as you can see here, the heat bed is heating up to 60 degrees Celsius and I have the extrusion heating up to 210. So we'll give that a minute to let that heat up. So now that the extruder is heated up, let's load in the filament so we can just take it, run it right through the filament runout sensor, 
and in, and this knob is nice. You can just turn it and that'll feed it right through. You technically don't have to go into the settings and load it in, it's not really necessary. So I just feed it through until you can see it just come out the bottom and that's all. All right, so now that everything is heated up, both the extrusion and the heat bed, let's go back and we'll go to print. We'll select one of the files they already have on here and let's do, let's do this ghost. This says it'll take 30 minutes. Print this model, we'll hit confirm and we'll let this go. So as you can see, it's printing right now and I don't know if you can hear it, but all I hear is a fan going and that's it. I don't really hear any noise from the rails moving, whether it's Z axis, Y axis. I don't really hear a thing. All I hear is this fan, which to me, that's really quiet. So this ghost has just finished printing and as you can see right here it took 26 minutes and 43 seconds so i'm gonna let this cool down for a minute before i take this piece off because as you can see it's kind of stuck so i'll let this cool down and we'll be right back okay now that this has cooled down this bed is cool to the touch i could take off the ghosts and from what i see that looks really, really good. So now that this one was done, I'm gonna run a few more tests on this and print out a few more things just to see what else we can print and how well the detail comes out since this is kind of small. So I'm gonna go ahead and print something a little bit bigger just to see what how it comes out. So let's do that and then I'll be back. All right, so you can see that the Batman bust has finished. And if we take a look at it, you can see that this came out really, really well. You can hardly see any of the layer lines. They're there, but they're faint. But I bet if I just sand this up a little bit, prime it, I can paint this really nice and make it look really, really well. As you can see, this took 10 hours just under to print. However, I did set the, the layer height to 0.1 millimeters and the speed was 60. So sure, it took a while. I could have printed it at 0.2 millimeters, which would have taken probably half the time, but I wanted to see how good a quality I can actually get this to print. So that's why I set those settings like that. All right, so I'm gonna talk about a few things that I really like about this machine. And first, I think the biggest thing is that this machine is really quiet while it's printing. The only thing I heard was the fan going and sitting in the other room, I could barely even hear that it was even printing anything. So right there, big bonus. I do like that it has the double Z and double Y access polish bars, which give it a more accurate print, keeps it more stable. You'll have less wobble and whatnot. Also, the leveling system on this is fantastic. When I set this up to begin with, as you saw, all I had to do was hit the home button. I hit auto level and it did everything for me. There was no screws underneath that you see in a lot of printers that you have to maneuver, turn, twist to get it all leveled perfectly. This, it did it all for me. I did not have to do a single thing to get this to level. I also didn't need to move into the settings and adjust the Z axis in there to make it any higher or lower. And as you can see the results, it printed more or less perfectly. I do like that it has the linear rail. I also really love this, uh, the filament feed in the knob, which easily makes it so you can feed it in and out without having to go into the settings and hit filament load, filament unload, and then you're waiting this. You can just turn it and it'll feed it right in and out super fast. It also comes with the filament runout sensor, which you can see right here. 
and it does have resume printing in case of a power outage or anything like that. Also, this was a breeze to set up. It only took me probably five minutes to get this put together. There was only a couple screws on the bottom and all I had to do was also just hook the filament holder up and we were all set to get started. I also like that you can print with almost any kind of filament that you throw at it, whether it be PLA, ABS, TPU, PETG, no matter what you put, it should work just fine. Now I haven't tried it with a million other filaments yet, but down the road I will. And if I notice anything different, I'll leave you guys an update and let you know. I do like that it has an option for an SD card, the TIFF card, or the micro USB, which is definitely a bonus instead of having just one way to plug anything in and print. The other thing that I really like about this machine that I haven't seen on really any other ones is that it has these two handles on top to make it easy to carry. And if you gotta move it around a lot or you're taking it with you for convention shows, whatever, it's nice to be able to just pick it up by the handles and move it. I like that it has a really large build area. It's 300 by 300 by 230. Now it's not the highest for this size that I've seen and used, but that's not bad at all. I like it more that you can print out a bigger area depending on which orientation you, you lay out your piece. So I think it could be a little higher. Maybe they could make it 300, but then you're just making the machine that much bigger. So I think it's just fine for what it is. I do like the touch screen. It's really easy to use. The buttons are precise. They work perfectly. I don't have any hiccups. It does support Wi-Fi. If you wanted to hook it up to your network, you can. So that's another feature that I, I really like. I haven't used it again yet, but it is an option. The only thing I don't like is that the power button is on the back right next to where the plug goes in. Now it's not a big deal, but I would prefer to have it on the front so it's easy to just pop it on and off. So overall, what do I think of this machine? I think this machine is fantastic. It works really well. The prints come out great. It is a little bit pricier for some people. I think it goes for about 550 if you're looking on Amazon. I will put a link down in the description notes in case you wanna pick up one along with a discount. So that'll help a little bit. But this is, this is fantastic. I love this machine. So I will probably be sticking with this for a while. Well, that's it for today, guys. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, ring the bell, get notified of all the new videos that come out each week. And as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.